8. Nous avions une réunion à Budapest. Peter hugged me and said, it's okay. Do you know what is the first lesson that special need teachers learn? The very first lesson is, sometimes you cannot be perfect, but you are good enough. So please believe me, You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be good. You are good enough. I stopped crying. And on that day, I also stopped blaming myself. Not from one moment to the other, but slowly. I went to psychotherapy. I was studying autism in university. I read millions of books but I started to stop, uh, stop blaming myself. One of the first special need teachers of my autistic son also became my mentor. Her name was Sheila. And Sheila was working continuously and amazingly with my son, and she also suggested me books and trainings to go. She was always there for us. I trusted her fully. Without a support, you are lost. In autism, there is no democracy. There are too much information out there. There are too many methods, too many therapies. There are good solutions and false prophets. Without a mentor, you are lost. Doesn't matter whether you are a parent, a professional, or a person with autism, you need someone you fully trust, your go-to person. When my son was Around eight years old, we had a pet, a tiny little cat we named Tiger. And though my son was not very communicative, he was always ready to talk about Tiger and ask questions or, or read facts about cats. Sheila got the idea to create a Tiger book for him as a language developmental tool. And that worked. So you see, Tiger was a very, very important person in our household. Years later, one night at 2 a.m., I called Sheila. 
and I have to admit, I was crying again. You know, I still hate crying. And she picked it up and um, asked, what happened? And I told her that in that night, our beloved cat died. And I just cannot bear it anymore. I don't know whether my son will stop communicating. I have no idea how he will survive that. I have no idea how to tell it to him. I want to give up. I want someone else to do it. Finally, she made me calm. We talked a bit. And then in the next morning, I was able to tell to my son what happened with the cat. And this is how you recognize your go-to person. You can call that person even at 2 a.m. And she picks it up. Recently, when I was preparing myself for this speech, I met with one friend of mine, Will, and he gave me a book. The name of the book is Life Strategies. If there are American friends around, you will recognize the writer. The writer is Dr. Phil. Yeah, <laughs> I know. So I started to read that book, and in the chapter seven, I found one line. Life cannot be cured but life can be guided. And that was one of those wow moments in my life. I put down the book slowly, and I talked. Oh my, autism is life. Autism cannot be cured but can be guided. It's not whether you get knocked down, it's whether you get up, because you will be knocked down. As a researcher, the expected outcome will not come. As a therapist, our client will be stuck, and you have no idea why. As a parent, you're gonna have sleepless nights. As a person, with autism, for sure you are going to face with lots of difficulty. But it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter that you get knocked down. What matters that in the next morning you get up again. As a president of the Autism Europe for the last eight years, I brought you 3Gs today. I know that in mobile communication, 4Gs I've, or 5Gs are more, more trendy, but I have only 3Gs. But I hope you are going to remember that. G1, good. You cannot be always good, but you are good enough. You have to stop blaming yourself. G2, go to person. In autism, there is no democracy. There are too much information out there. You need a mentor. You need a go to person who you fully trust. Guidance. In autism, there is no cure, but there is guidance. Today, as a proud mother of two bright young adults, I can stay here and I can tell you that I am not good, but I am good enough and so are you.